All right, so in this video, you're going to see a couple of things. One, you're going to see two clips from the Dr. Phil show where you see a takedown of a pro-abortion position as well as a takedown of Dr. Phil himself, which he pretty much does himself by contradicting himself and totally embarrassing himself. It's really, really astonishing how someone like Dr. Phil could just be so dense on the subject matter and come across like he's some brilliant scholar when he's absolutely not. So the article is from the Gateway Pundit, but we're going to actually jump on over to live action because the founder of live actions, her name is Lila Grace Rose. This is her right here. And we're going to show you two clips from the live action Twitter page. And so let's just take a look at this first clip. And this is about a minute and 22 seconds. And this is Lila Grace Rose arguing or not really arguing. Actually, that's kind of the point of this. She is being compassionate. She's being understanding. She's showing love, empathy, which is interesting because they claim she doesn't show empathy. But I'm going to comment over this as it goes on, because I want to let you see the sort of talking points that the left uses to push forth a position that really is not backed by science. Check this out. There is nothing you could possibly say to justify that level of lack of empathy. And that's the problem I feel like in this country at the moment, we were founded on the lack of empathy. And we okay, we were founded on the lack of empathy. Now, this is off the subject. Here these people are diverting. They're diverting the fact of taking the life of, let's say, an unborn child with empathy. Okay, well, let's just go back to that statement talking about this country being founded or lack thereof of empathy. I'm not sure what she's talking about because we have a country which was founded on the rights of people to have self-determination so that they can have their rights that are not prescribed by where you come from, where you live, who your father was, who your mother was, what church you were part of. No, it's just who you are and hard work and hard effort that can get you ahead because those rights come from God. You've heard it here many, many times, but it needs to be repeated. Obviously, empathy is giving people the right for self-determination and making their own decisions, not locking them down into some, some kind of virtual slavery. It just kept up with that tradition. If, if you have no empathy. A abortion is devastating for, to women's mental health. No one talks about that. The year after a woman has you an abortion. It's really like the, the year after a woman to have the child. What kind of Okay, first of all, this is what liberals do. She was going into the whole deal and, and her whole approach here was empathy. She wasn't getting mad or angry. You can see the contrast. And that's what's going on. This is a great example, a classic case of the radical nature of the Marxist agenda versus conservatism and passion, passionate conservatism. Dare I say that? And we talked about what conservatism is. I won't talk about it here. Well, I will. Conservatism essentially says here in America is we're conserving our original values, which means that we come from a place where God gives us our rights. And that is where we're going towards to conserve. We want to conserve that particular principle, which is different than anywhere else in the world because those places are coming from a church. It's coming from a king or queen, or like I said before, a monarchy, but it's not coming from God. And those rights by the state can be taken from you, which is why conservatism here in America is absolutely unique. So here you have a situation where she is irate and cutting her off, which will come into full circle later with Dr. Phil. What kind of trauma is the that trauma that is from the on rape. somebody? The trauma is from the rape. The child's an innocent party there. The child is not born yet. It's not there. We, we should not take out generational sin on a child to say there's generational sin and that dad was but an abuser the so the We're child should be killed. At this That's rate. not We're fair to the child. We're talking about rights. And he just yes. said, we've been taken, a right has been taken away from us. And what is next? I want to address that. Okay, she says a right has been taken away from us. What did I just say about God giving us our rights? See, that's a key point here. The left thinks that their rights come from the states and that those rights can be taken from us. Well, they really can't. And yet on the most fundamental basic level, there is the right to life. She's saying the baby's not there. So therefore it doesn't have the right. But yet life starts at conception. And that we'll talk about that here in a second. But then do you notice do you notice just the contrast in demeanor and continence on both these people and how she is? This is Lila Grace Rose showing an immense amount of patience and empathy. Right, that we all share in this room is life. It's the first human right. Laws are meant to protect the weak. In a society, who's the weakest? 
Who's the weakest in the society? A child. The poor. They don't have a voice. They can't speak. A child the in the room. That's or the weak. But poorest. a poor child and we're would be the weakest. And we're going to keep them that way. By and, and a child with disability. She said, did you say the poorest? I think you said the poorest. So if you're poor, then you can go ahead and kill them. See, that's the mentality with the left, right? I mean, look, you have the right to live. And that's what she goes on here to say a little bit later. The same arguments that people are using now to justify abortion are the exact same arguments they're using and used to justify the captivity of African slaves. It is the same thing. If you look at the Dred Scott case, essentially said that they're not a human and you can go and keep them in bondage. They don't have the right to anything. And so you must return them back to their masters. And that's where it went. It's a horrible Supreme Court decision. Roe v. Wade essentially said the same thing, that a baby unborn is not a person and therefore you can go ahead and um, terminate that particular life. And so that is the distinct difference that we're seeing here and that I don't think the left gets because their worldview totally prevents them from seeing that. Germany, listen, whether you live 10 minutes or 10 years or 100 years, you're a human life and you have the right to not be killed. And that's what the pro-life fight is all about. That's what we're fighting for, a culture of life where we provide real health care. You know, abortion is the intentional destruction of an innocent but human life. She wants to base the whole premise on the right to life, and their group is called Live Action. It's great. Let's go to the next clip here. This is good. This is with Dr. Phil. And we're going to talk about some, some stats here and some science that Phil is going to obviously, as you can imagine, deny. The predicate of your positions that life begins at fertilization, and science is very clear about that. And you have to know science isn't, there's no consensus among the scientific community. There is, that, Dr. Phil, 96% no, of scientists not. say that I, life begins at fertilization. Okay, so the, <laughs> this dude, right, so the, she didn't even get the statistic out before he cut her off, before he cut her off. Now he's gonna contradict himself a couple of times. Right there, he cut her off immediately. If you're an in vitro specialist, no, no, you're let, looking to create let me, let me a single cell embryo, and then you know you have a new human life. So it, it is a scientific fact. Well, actually, it's not. Well, when, do you, when do you say human life begins then? There's, well, it's, it doesn't matter what I think. I, 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 okay, he says, first he says all this stuff. It doesn't matter what I think. But when it comes to other opinions on the show, when it deals with, well, the coof in particular, and whether or not you're going to have your body and have the rights for someone to tell you what to put in your body, he was totally okay with that. Science was totally settled there, but here all of a sudden, he doesn't wanna, it's not about me, it's what the scientists say, but what did she just quote here? Right here, Live Action has, Dr. Phil, there's no consensus amongst the scientific community that life begins at conception. Lila says that's simply inaccurate. 96% of biologists affirm this fact. And then he goes to say, you keep speaking over me. Well, let's get to that, let's keep going. I don't care what I think. What I'm saying is well, the scientific community does not have a consensus about when life begins. It's simply and that inaccurate. Is, You're sim it's simply inaccurate. That's not true. You can go to the a body. A single of, cell embryo is a unique new human life. You can go to the body of scientific literature and you can find neuroscientists who say that it begins when there is a detectable brain wave. But Dr. Phil, in an abortion, if it's not a human life, why do you have to kill it? I haven't spoken over you and you keep speaking over me. See, okay, so sometimes when you debate somebody and they put out uh, these litany of inaccuracies, really it's a narrative of what he's putting forth. He's not putting forth any scientific facts. She said 96% of biologists affirm this fact, but he just, overshoots that and goes to some other opinions. Well, you got these other people here who says a heartbeat or, or a brainwave. Okay, well, have you ever been on the internet and debated somebody and then they would have, you have a hundred articles saying one thing and they would find one article in some left-leaning article somewhere saying the opposite and they would cite that one particular article to back up their claim. You're always gonna have dissenting opinions, but he said consensus, 96% is a consensus. I assume that's because you don't want me to finish my thought, which is if anyone here wants to fact check. Does he even have a thought here that you're talking about? Is <laughs> anyone here wants to fact check? Okay, keep going. Check me instead of speak over me. You can go to the scientific literature and query 
what the definition is of the beginning of life. And you. Okay, look, first of all, when you talk about what is a woman, do I need to even go any further there? I mean, they've already set the bar so low. Can we really trust them dealing with what a recession is, much less what happens when a sperm and an egg come together? You really can't because they've set the bar so low that they are in now a situation of semantics and word salad so that they can make anything appear the way they want to appear, especially when they have the backing of the mainstream media. We'll find that there are different definitions and it's up to you. Different definitions. Does that sound familiar? Let me back up here and this last point he's about to, he's about to make or try to make. And it's up to you to decide what you think. It's up to you to decide what you think. Here we go here, situational ethics. We're talking about relative morality. What I say goes. If I say it's okay to do something, then it's perfectly okay. But if someone else says, well, I'm gonna do the same thing to you, well, that's not okay. But he says it's perfectly fine because in his world, he's the king of his universe. He can do what he wants because that's his morality. And that leaves problems all over the place. And so that's why we have a problem here because kids do not know. People do not know what is right or wrong. People say, look, there are no absolutes, okay? When I ask them, are you absolutely sure? If we're just really fizzing, we're just molecules bouncing up against each other, and we're just randomly going through space, what difference does that make anyway? If you think our brain waves are just random thoughts, then how can you even trust your thoughts to begin with? You have to have absolutes, and that comes from God. And that's what the left doesn't get, and that's why the crux of this pro-life position in this pro-life movement is based on God and this whole country is based on God as well. But you let me know what you think about that. What are your thoughts on this particular clip that you saw from live action and Lila Grace Rose? Do you think that she was compassionate? Do you think she showed empathy? And lastly, what are your thoughts on Phil and uh, how do you think he handled it? And do you like me think that he contradicted himself no less than two times in this video? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be curious to know what you think. And until then, check out these pro-life videos we have for you right here.